Wow, look at all these 35 millimeter negatives taken over the years. For years and years and years. I must have hundreds of them in there. And these slides, I've got several notebooks full of these slides too. Sure would be nice to have these all digitized. Have you ever thought that? Today I'm going to show you how to do that with your own digital camera. Hi, I'm John Packard and I live in Seattle. I'm a lifelong photographer. I got my first camera when I was 12 and I spent 34 years as a lab technician doing technical photography. I started out in the late 70s using 4x5 graphic view cameras and then, and then later on I made a macro workstation using Panasonic cameras. But today I'm going to show you the method I have of using your own digital camera to convert all your slides and negatives into digital images. This is a great indoor activity because you get to see all those neat old pictures you haven't seen in years and store them on the hard drive of your computer where you can send them out to relatives, make slideshows, or post them on social media. Another interesting th aspect of this is that some of those old pictures you thought were a little bit too fuzzy but you held on to them could be corrected by using Photoshop's shake reduction filter. To get started transferring all of your slides and negatives into digital images, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you need a camera stand. You'll need a transparency viewer, a flashlight, maybe a magnifier, a bubble level, a brush made for getting the dust off of your negatives and slides before you take pictures of them, and of course the digital camera. I'm using here a Lumix GH5 with a 60 millimeter Olympus macro lens but you could use any interchangeable lens camera with a good macro lens on it. Another thing you're going to need is tethering software. I'm using Lumix Tether software, and that way I can connect the camera to the computer and control the camera and take the pictures just from with my mouse and my keyboard. Transferring your images using your camera I think is a lot more enjoyable. Using the scanner you get a small thumbnail you can look at. You can't really tell what you've got, but uh, with this method you see a full-size image on your screen before you take the picture. On the scanner it takes several minutes before you have a, a picture whereas with the camera you just snap the shutter release and you've got your picture instantly. One of the things I really like about this method is that I end up with a raw image. And raw images have a lot more latitude for adjustment than a JPEG or a TIFF file off of the scanner. It's always better to go directly from the negative to the digital image rather than go from a negative to a print to scanning the print because that raw image will preserve much more of the detail from the negative than a print would. Also I have a slideshow at the end of the video made up of all images I've digitized using the GH5 camera. Some slides and some negatives. And now to mount the camera to the stand first I'll insert the USB cable into the camera to connect it to the computer and then add the AC adapter battery pack so that I can run for a long time and then just mount the camera to the stand. I have a little mark on the side that I've made that it's about in the right height that I'll need to go to each time and I can just lay this on the surface just to see if it lines up about right. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit too high so I'm going to lower it a little bit. And that looks about right. So now I'm going to use my bubble level on the light stand. Take note of where the bubble is in relation to the center and then set it on the camera and tilt the camera side to side by loosening the knob until I get it positioned about in the same place. That will assure me that the camera is parallel to the light box surface. So when I want to scan a slide, the first thing I want to do is take my brush and wipe off the transparency viewer surface so there's no dust between it and the slide. Then take the slide and clean both sides. Now take the slide and put it with the words color transparency up or emulsion side up. You can tell which side is the emulsion because it's the duller side. And then place it in so it's upright to the camera's perspective. 
and you want to make sure that there's enough room all the way around that it's not being cut off. Now when I'm done doing this, I have everything all aligned just to where I want it and I place little bits of modeling clay all the way around both the transparency viewer and the base that comes with the stand so that everything is fixed. So when I go to use this next time, everything will be all arranged in the right position. Then it'll just be a matter of adjusting the camera height to the right place. So now I've turned off most of my room lights. I actually have one more light on than I would normally just for the sake of filming. But you want to have most of your room lights off. And I just use a small ring light aimed away from the camera just, just to give me enough ambient light to see my keyboard and so forth. Okay, so now I have a slide under my camera and I have it centered so that it's uh, got black showing all the way around here. And I'm looking at my Lumix Tether software and looking at all the parameters I have set here. This is showing that I have my camera set on aperture priority. Uh, F-stop is F4, which is optimal for this lens. I have it set on automatic white balance, which this camera does very well at setting automatic white balance, so I go with, go with that. Then I can also adjust the exposure here, the exposure value, to make it uh, lighter or darker, depending if I, if I want to. But this looks like uh, I'm going to just leave it at the automatic setting in the middle, the average setting, rather. And then here we have the setting button. Here you're allowed to name the image before you shoot it. And you can only have 20 characters here. So if you do need to rename this and add characters later, make sure and rename both the JPEG and the raw image. And then you can choose what number to start with here. I'm just starting at number one. And then under reference, I just created a, a folder to save them to called slide test folder. You can store them anywhere you want to on your hard drive or a remote drive. And say select folder and save, and that's it. I can click here, and it's focused. I can see it looks pretty sharp. Now I just go over to the, the expose icon, have my mouse lifted up off the table, and hit take the picture. And now we can see the image has been stored on the computer here. And I can double click on the raw image to have it open in Adobe Camera Raw within Photoshop. A lot of people use Lightroom, but I, I like Adobe Camera Raw. It's just, it's just what I'm used to. So now I want to flip it. So I go to the crop icon and, and do a horizontal flip. And then I can go ahead and crop it. Uh, or I could do that in Photoshop either way. But uh, might as well just do it here while we've got it. And I like to leave the, the rounded corners on it. Uh, it looks like an old-time slide. I know it's a slide, so uh, I, I just like it that way. Now I can open it in Photoshop and look at it and do whatever else I want to do to it. If I want to do any more adjusting there, I can. So this is how I scan negatives. First of all, I have to determine which side is the emulsion side, and it looks like this is a little bit duller than this side. So this is the emulsion side, so that's the side I want up. So I'll set that there, and then I'm going to take off this retainer that goes on top. Then I'll just set this negative in place. And I can put another one in also. And that looks good, so I'll just replace this now. Then I'll take my brush and wipe both of them to get the any loose dust particles off. And if I've accidentally gotten a fingerprint on a slide, like I see one right there, all I have to do is just take a microfiber cloth and just gently rub it off. Now I'm ready to just place it on the ready to just place it on the viewer. And then I'm going to put some weights on it to hold it flat, level, like that. Now it's not tipping up or down, and it should be in the right position. Now I'm ready to capture a negative, and I've got it positioned under the camera. I've got my Lumix Tether software opened, 
And at this point, I can move the image around and get it framed just the way I want it. I uh, just want to try and get, get it so that it's included in the capture area and the sides are relatively square to the frame. Then I want to check all my settings again, make sure I have them where I want them, and then take the picture. Now I want to go to the raw image. We'll be inverting this negative using the RGB curves. So what we want to do is take first the red curve and then take the lower left point, raise it all the way to the top and bring it over until the line coming down from that point intersects the base of the curve. And then we'll take the upper right hand point and move it all the way down until it intersects the right hand side of the curve. And then we'll take the, the green curve and do the same thing. Again, raise it up to the top, bring it over until that line intersects the bottom part of the curve and bring the upper right hand corner down until it intersects the bottom part of the curve on the right side. And we'll do the same for the blue. Now this has been done in a lot more detail in another video and I'll put a link to that video in the notes. Now once we've done this, we can go back to each one and adjust them a little bit to get a little bit more to our liking or to the way it really was. It was fall and the colors were good so I'm going to make sure the colors look nice here. And then the blue one. Okay, now we can go back to the basic tab and make any adjustments there we want to make. Some of these won't be working properly. We have to realize that they're not, they're not acting the way they're supposed to because we've adjusted the RGB curves. But uh, we can adjust the vibrance up, for example, a little bit, and maybe the saturation a little bit. But if we want to just adjust the sky, for example, we can make a, a mask and select sky. And now we can run the exposure down in the sky to make it a little darker and a little bluer. And also run the saturation up a little bit. And now we can open it in Photoshop. And say we still don't like the way the sky looks. It's, it looks kind of grainy and it's got defects all over it. So what I would do is just go under Edit, Sky Replacement, and we'll use this first option. We don't want to make it look too different. Could if you wanted to, but I'd prefer to just leave it the way it was. Uh, so I'll use that first one, which is just about the way it was. And now we've got a layer for the sky, so we can select that layer and then adjust it some more using the levels adjustment. And that looks pretty good. It also tends to tone down the telephone lines a little bit. You know, they're not quite as dark as they were. And we can also adjust the hue and saturation if we want to make it look a little bit more like it really was. Um, Maybe that's a little bit more like what it used to be. Anyway, I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to load some two and a quarter inch negatives into this two and a quarter film holder. I'll put a link in the notes again for where you can get one of these. This came with my Epson 4990 scanner. This, this time I'm going to brush these off here before I put them in the holder because they're not very much grip on these once I put them into the holder. If I press on them they might come loose. You could consider wearing white gloves when you do this. You don't get any fingerprints on them. I try to grip them near the edges though so that that doesn't happen. I'm putting the dull side up. There they are. Now I'm going to have to reconfigure the stand because of the size of these negatives. I have to move the camera further away. So to do that, I'm going to have to remove the camera. And I'm going to have to reverse this bracket.
Then I'll put the camera back on the bracket. Make sure it's plugged in. Then we need to place the bubble level on the transparency viewer. Take note of where it is. It should be in the same place as last time. You just place it on the camera back now and adjust the camera. Pivot the camera back and forth until it's about the same position. So now I'm going to remove the slide mask from the transparency viewer, place the two and a quarter inch negative on it, and then weigh it down again with these weights. And if you want to, you can place a couple of pieces of black paper over the to keep the stray light from affecting the picture. And make sure all the negative is included in the capture. That looks good. Check all my settings. I'm going to use the same settings as I used last time. So I'll focus and take the picture. Now this other negative that's two and a quarter by two and a quarter doesn't seem to fit very well in here because it's got such a bow to it. It's kind of drooping and I want it to be laying flat. I don't know if you can tell but it's, it's got kind of a bend to it. I could turn it over and then it flattens out but I want to be shooting from the emulsion side. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and just put it right on the transparency viewer. Try and get it positioned about right. And then I'm going to use these hold downs to, to hold it flat. The main thing I want to be careful of when doing this is that I don't scratch the negative as I move it around. Now I can just add a couple of these black pieces of paper. Now I'll focus on this one and take the exposure. Now we'll process the Adobe Camera Raw. We'll do it the same way we did the others. This time we won't adjust each of the RGB curves. We'll just, we'll just adjust the main curve. That's all we need to do for grayscale images. So we'll do the same thing as we did before. But this time just once. Now we'll go back to the basic tab. And we don't need to do too much here, I don't think. I'll open it in Photoshop. Can adjust the curves here if we want to. Okay, try to get rid of that defect that's there. Uh, use the clone stamp tool. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to process the two and a quarter by two and a quarter negative. And this time I'm going to use the JPEG image. This is a different way you can do this. And I'll just go ahead and crop first. And now I'm going to flip the image. Image rotation, flip horizontal. And then I'm just going to go into image adjustments, invert. And now I'm just going to go up and do image auto color. That sets the levels. He still got kind of a hot spot on his face. I'm going to go back into Adobe Camera Raw by hitting Control Shift A. And I'm going to bring down that hot spot by uh, taking the highlights all the way down. Now you can see detail coming back to his face, but to compensate for that I'm going to adjust the contrast up. Yeah, maybe turn, pull the exposure back up a little bit. Well, that looks pretty good. And I think that's the fast way to do these black and white negatives and still get really good results. Now check out the slideshow of some images I've created from both slides and negatives on my setup.
Thank you.